I'll just pick up on some of the themes that you that you mentioned. So you talked about consumption, perhaps the need to support consumption. So the Indian economy seems to be going through a bit of a soft patch right now. I mean, inflation is above six percent. Markets have fallen. Some of the recent data has not been so good. So, are there any measures the government is looking at uh, to boost consumption? Uh, are you looking at cutting some tariffs, for example, to uh, you know, for, so that it doesn't feed through to inflation or well, any I, other measure? Bodhi, first of all, I think everybody in this room will at least recognize and appreciate that uh, to pick up on what uh, Ms. Bhan just said. Uh, audacity of ambition, audacity of hope. This government hasn't ever fallen short of audacity of action. And we have always been at the forefront of acting on every single agenda that can help this economy, that can help the country and the people of India. As far as the inflation goes, the kind of synchronized action that both on the monetary policy front and fiscal policy front government and the Reserve Bank, and you'll hear it from Shakti Kanji when he comes, have been, for the last five or six years, been very, very actively intervening, has helped India remain one of the best performing economies in the world in terms of inflation management. In fact, if, if I'm sure CNBC TV18, uh, with its glorious research team, must be doing the data analytics, the inflation under the Modi government for the last 10 years, average inflation has been the lowest India has seen since independence. In fact, uh, when the Monetary Policy Committee came out with their recommendations last time around, they had predicted this month, the last number, to be a spike in inflation. It is not something which is rocket science. I see all the top honchos of the stock market here. They could have told CNBC TV18 the same thing if you had uh, asked them. It was not any surprise. But at the same time, we all recognize that we're going to see that falling again by Jan December or January. We have all, I think we are all smart enough to know what's happening, what the base effect is, what are the factors, what was the festival demand. Similarly, in terms of softening of demand, I have two points to make. One, I think it's time that industry also and businesses also look at consumer choices and consumer demand for more attractive pricing. And I was just looking at the numbers of a company, an automobile company which just went public. The same would probably go for most of the automobile companies of significance. I was seeing an EBITDA of more than 21%. I was seeing a PAT possibly of 9 or 10% on their balance sheet. I was seeing that they have invested $200 million 25 years ago. But in the last 10 years alone, I, could, I didn't have the time to research all 25 years' data. Maybe, Rahul, your team can help me with, that, with a complete analysis. But in the last 10 years alone, on an investment of $200 million, they have already remitted dividend and royalties of upward of 12 or 13 billion dollars in 10 years. They are sitting on a market cap of which their own holding is still about 15 billion dollars. And on, I, I still don't have data of how much they are supporting their own suppliers, international suppliers, maybe their subsidiaries or other companies. And aggregate returns on their investment I think anybody in this room, if you calculate, yeah. it's phenomenal. It's been staggering. It's staggering. And, and they have a huge demand in India. There's a huge competitive edge manufacturing in India gives you. So I think if smart business people start offering better pricing, better, uh, uh, better value for money, I'm sure the market will give them a boost. It's for them to decide whether they want to sit on high margins and then, as I read in the paper a couple of days back, or maybe yesterday, say that, oh, market is softening, auto market, passenger sales, uh, vehicle sales will be down to 3-4%, or to be more aggressive and try to capture a larger market share at more competitive pricing. I personally am one of those who believes that economies of scale 
that the huge demand that 140 crore Indians provide, the demand of 1.4 billion aspirational young India, the demand that our growing economy, our growing income levels offers is unmatched. And the affordability, the competitive edge that this economy of scale gives you will help you not only meet India's need, but also international demand. So choices of businesses, if uh, Rohit Java or, or, or all the other big businesses who are sitting here, I don't know who else is there that I can see. Uh, Subrakant, I see a lot of friends here. If they become more competitive in their pricing, I'm quite sure they can capture much bigger markets, get much better profits. At least we in government don't work on a quarter, say quarter tuck philosophy that was just now articulated. Q I think it's time investors also looked at the long term and not panic on every quarter. So I'm, I'm sure they'll be list paying close attention. So you're saying basically cut prices. That's what you're telling FMCG companies. I'm not auto suggesting companies. anything. I oh. just stated a matter of fact. Choices of the businesses, whatever they want to do. Should the RBI, since you're saying, obviously everyone knows the inflation was anticipated, that it'll, it'll be a bad, should they cut interest rates in December? Or I certainly believe they should cut interest rates. Growth needs a further impetus. We are the fastest growing economy in the world. We can do even better. And frankly, the largest component of inflation is food inflation. Uh, I think the chief economic advisor had also Assess the whole situation. And this is not something I say today. Uh, if you look back at the archives, some of the friends here may have heard me talk. Even when I was in the opposition, before I came into government, I had been consistently saying, that, uh, we have a senior uh, RBI governor sitting here, maybe he can throw more light on it. But I think it's an absolutely flawed theory that food inflation should be considered while deciding on the interest rate structure, food inflation has nothing whatsoever to do with uh, managing inflation. That's a demand supply situation. That's, that's not something that is being hoarded or stocked in large numbers. I've seen the data of uh, stocking or stockpiling of food products as Consumer Affairs Minister used to monitor that month on month. And I think uh, it's time that the policymakers and regulators seriously sat down, discussed with all stakeholders, discussed with economists even beyond uh, their own, and we came to a considered view whether food inflation should at all be a part of the decision making for inflation or interest rates. So I'm sure Dr. Ragarajan and indeed the governor will weigh in later. So do you think he should go big like the... This is my opinion. I don't speak for the government. You ask me my opinion. So I'm not necessarily speaking for the government. I'm quoting from the CA's report. And I'm stating on record, this has been my considered view for the last 20 years at least. So you all, so 50 basis points or 25 basis points? I'm not Nostradamus, nor am I an astrologer. No, but what do you, what do you think they should do? Well, I, they are wise men. I will leave it to their judgment. Okay. It's signaling also. Very often it's signaling. Very often it's the intent. Very often, it's the confidence you give to the market. So, in, you also alluded to, you know, I mean, you didn't directly, but on this private capex not picking up. So I didn't allude. Where, don't put words in my mouth, sir. No, no, you didn't. You didn't. I never said. Did I ever say that? You were. I think private capex is picking up massively. Right. Every industrialist I meet, every foreign investor I meet, they talk of massive plans in India, massive growth in their industry. Uh, investments, massive growth in looking at inv infrastructure, assets. So pardon me, the private sector is very bullish on India. I think we need to see some more bullishness amongst the journalists. Among the media, yeah. What about the much talked about plans to, of Elon Musk to invest in India? The trail seems to have gone cold some months back. Is something happening there? Well, that's a choice that Mr. Elon Musk will have to make. We will be very happy to welcome all the companies from across the world to come and invest in India, to make electric vehicles in India. This government over the last 10 years has consistently focused on sustainability. We are giving a number of incentives and schemes to promote 
more and more adoption of uh, electric vehicles through our FAME scheme, through the recent PM uh, e-bus uh, Seva Yojana. Uh, I personally have been monitoring the, the cost differential between electric vehicles and ICE engines. I think today, on a cost, total cost of ownership between CapEx and OPEX, it's a, it just doesn't make sense to buy anything but an electric vehicle. It's, it's the right time. Two-wheelers have almost all gone electric. On buses, I think it's a great economic model to go electric. With the fall of prices of batteries and with newer ideas like the plug-in hybrid, where you first run on a battery for about 100 kilometers, your passenger car, and after you run out of it, it switches to petrol. It's not a hybrid of the traditional type that we saw, let's say, the Camry. This is significantly different. And the more I studied it, though I was always anti-hybrid, publicly, including on yeah, CNBC yeah, yeah. Uh, programs, yeah, yeah. I was always anti-hybrid. But when I studied the model of the plug-in hybrid, where you can have the first 100 kilometers of a passenger car on electric, and only in the case of emergency switch to petrol, it takes care of range anxiety, and it helps cut down petrol consumption probably by 90-95%. I was assessing my own vehicle's consumption or distance traveled, and I could see only one or two days in a year when I go more than 100 kilometers by car. If it's anything longer, you take a train or you take a flight. So I think it's, it's something whose idea has come, but more and more our buses, our trucks, our passenger vehicles are going to see electric mobility. Companies are taking on this challenge also. They are looking at being net zero, some by 2030, some by 2035. I invite industry to at least immediately look at switching over to electric vehicles or better modes of transport and logistics and contribute to this effort to make India a great place to live in, bring down pollution, and uh, contribute to our sustainability effort. So, Minister, what the U.S. does, does have a huge signaling effect in, uh, for the rest of the world, um, still. The, the Inflation Reduction Act is likely to be substantially rolled back once President Trump assumes office, including the emphasis on electrification on that. But we are not going to change. We are going to go all in for electric as we... I think we are not going to change. We stand committed to promoting sustainability. And uh, we believe even though we are not responsible for this problem in the first place, I think everybody in this room recognizes supporting 16% of the world's population. Our contribution to the mess up there is less than probably 3 or 4%. Right. So we are not responsible. But Prime Minister Modi, who played an important role to make COP21 a success, to bring the Paris Agreement to fruition, stands committed as the leader of the Global South to be a part of the solution, even though we are not the problem in the first place. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much.